a baptismal witness to justice for minorities. In 1829, Bishop Benedict Joseph Fenwick of Boston founded a Catholic newspaper to explain, defend, and spread the teachings of the Catholic Church. By 1836, he decided it would be better to put the paper in the hands of the laity. He transferred the ownership to Patrick Donahue, who renamed the paper the Boston Pilot. One of the Pilot's editors, John Boyle O'Reilly, assumed that office in 1876. He was born to a family of educators in Ireland. As a young man, he enlisted in the British Army, where he worked covertly to advance the cause of Irish independence. When he was discovered, he was arrested, given a 20-year prison term, and sent to a penal colony in Western Australia. Eventually, he escaped and made his way to Boston, where he became a reporter and then the editor of the pilot. For the next 20 years, O'Reilly was the foremost influence in directing Irish immigrants through the process of cultural assimilation. For a time, his literary talents and friendly attitude toward the Protestant establishment earned him a favorite place in society and an invitation to join the exclusive Papyrus Club. But he never forgot his ethnic roots or his Catholic faith. He used his gift as a public speaker, civil rights leader, poet, and novelist to bridge the gap between Catholics and Protestants in 19th century Boston while enhancing, while enhancing Catholic identity in the process. He wrote a book of verses, Songs from the Southern Seas. He also wrote articles for the Atlantic Monthly and Scribner's Monthly. He used the pilot as a platform for defending an independent Ireland and addressing the rights of African Americans and Native Americans. He compared the oppression that these minorities were suffering to that which the Irish immigrants were experiencing. These oppressed groups had a friend in this man. He openly campaigned in the pilot for political candidates who were for social reform. He joined several charitable organizations and was an outstanding proponent of Catholic education. He received honorary doctorates from Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. and Notre Dame University in South Bend, Indiana. His unexpected death from a heart attack in 1890 was termed as a public calamity by Cardinal Gibbons of Baltimore. When he died, observers historian Mark Schneider in Boston confronts Jim Crow. The opportunity slipped away for some kind of progressive association between Irish Catholics and the member of Boston's small African-American community. The light of green and black unity flickered and died. Because of his forceful public presence and outstanding Catholic witness, the wake for O'Reilly was held in St. Mary's Catholic in Charlestown, a neighborhood in Boston, where mourners by the thousands came to pay their respects. The Catechism says that all who are reborn as children of God in baptism must profess before men the faith they have received from God through the Church and participate in the apostolic and missionary activities of the people of God. God gave John Boyle O'Reilly the grace to live out in a vigorous and inspiring manner his baptismal commitment to the cause of Christ, the Church, and God's Kingdom. He showed how the laity can bring the gospel to a society and make a difference.